Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of Haunted by James Herbert. So this is the first book in the David Ash series. Weirdly, I own books two and three, so I had to track this down so that I could read book number one. It's nice and short though. I'm going to read you the blurb, I'm going to go through and check out my tabs. I didn't tab that much out to be honest. And then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end, so... Dane reads... Three Nights of Terror at the house called Edbrook. Three nights in which David Ash, there to investigate a haunting, will be victim of horrifying and maleficent games. Three nights in which he will face the blood-chilling enigma of his own past. Three nights before Edbrook's dreadful secret will be revealed, and the true nightmare will begin. Now I will say, the, re the big reveal of this dreadful secret, you can see it coming a mile away. Um, I don't know if that's just because since this was published like late 80s, so many books have done the same thing. I did also find as well, Bearing in mind he wrote uh, The Secret of Crickley Hall, which was really good and like I would say is like a pretty good base to compare other ghost stories against. This one felt like a knockoff of Crickley Hall. So as I say, I don't have a huge amount tabbed and lots of it are these little one-liners like David Ash saying, you don't imagine I'd use British Rail by choice, do you? Uh, he's quite an unlikable protagonist. He's also got that sort of classic like drunk thing going on, he's a bit of a drunk. We get this little line between um, two people who know him, so David can sometimes be too absorbed in his own cynicism to allow much room for a developing relationship, or too absorbed in his work, Edith suggested. It more or less amounts to the same thing. Now you see, I, I relate to that, I think that could easily be describing me. And um, there are a lot of jumps as well between the past and the present in this, um, so just as the story's starting to pick up, it takes you back to something that happened 10 years ago. Um, there's also weird bits in scenes where it changes point of view. So you're following one of the characters and he picks up the phone and makes a call. And suddenly we can see what the other person who's receiving the call is doing. And we see the story through their eyes, which I didn't think worked very well. But also I've been trained to think of that as bad writing through various editing rounds of editing I've been through. and online creative writing courses, my, my degree and all of that stuff. So the other thing as well is he, uh, he slipped into passive voice a few times, which again, is generally these days considered a sign of bad writing. Um, and to me, I, it just felt quite jarring. So this was interesting, also, also like a little sort of snapshot of the time, but we learn some of the equipment that he has with him. He opened up the suitcase after throwing his overcoat onto the bed and began to unpack equipment he would use in the investigation. Magnetic tape recorder, two cameras, one a Polaroid, both with flash and capacitance detectors, extendable tripods, thermometers, magnifying glass, measuring tape, graphite powder and flour, strain gorge slash spring balance, as well as, as well as other items that might prove helpful, such as graphite paper, compass, voltmeter. And so Kate's telling him off for being too unhealthy, basically. She says, uh, you drink too much and smoke too much, and one day, it may be some time in coming, David, but it'll happen. Your brain will be dulled as your body often is. Might be no bad thing, Kate, he thought. No bad thing at all. Yeah, I mean, I think that's why a lot of people drink why I used to drink too much and he goes to visit a church this is again one of the past scenes rather than the present but he says well church is always this cold spiritual warmth was one thing but attendances might be up if these places of worship also provided physical warmth so I used to work at the art center which is a converted church and it's always cold in the old church there basically because of the way it's built um, and also because it costs a small fortune to heat up I think it was we figured out it costs like 70 pounds to heat the church up um, and most churches just don't have the money. And we get Ash wakes up and he goes, Surprise played its part in overcoming the lethargy. It was late afternoon. Ash had slept through most of the day. Welcome to my life, Ash. And so then we get like, this is one of the examples of the passive voice. Through the squalid and littered kitchen hurried Ash. And it should be Ash hurried through the squalid and littered kitchen. But yeah. Overall, that's all I've really got for you. It is quite a short story and there's not too much to say. Uh, I thought the twist that happened in this was quite predictable as well, but maybe I've just read enough books like this. Um, I'm also kind of bored of the whole alcoholic protagonist thing. It's actually the reason why in my book, uh, the main character is a reformed alcoholic right at the start because I was kind of poking fun at that trope of having the alcoholic detective, you know? Haunted by James Herbert, it was just okay. And, um, yeah, uh, 3.5 out of 5 for me. I will be reading the remaining uh, David Ash book soon. So there we have it. That's what I made of Haunted by James Herbert. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this book. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more. And I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.